Hi, my name's Vin Sheehan, and today I'd like to talk about Forty Towers, the um, the BBC sitcom written by John Cleese and Connie Booth, and um, this was broadcast uh, the first series in 1975, the second series in 1979. And I'd just like to go through uh, this classic comedy, um, exploring some of the themes that crop up uh, in there. Now, Forty Towers, of course, is one of the most beloved British comedies ever made. And, um, and watching it again recently just brings to mind how well written it is and how um, timeless it is, in a way. Yes, you know, obviously, the, the, the clothes and the sets, etc., look like they're from the 1970s. But the jokes... And the situations, the element of uh, slapstick and uh, are just absolutely timeless. And um, it's so well acted as well. I mean, the uh, John Cleese, of course, is absolutely amazing as the miserable, um, bitter, stressed out, incompetent um, hotel uh, manager or the owner of the hotel you know and of course he's the butt of most of the jokes and there's something about John Cleese his height that makes the um, the comedy that much more uh, enjoyable and the kind of over the top and slapstick the way he runs up and down the stairs and trips over etc he's a snob you know he's continually at loggerheads of his wife Sybil he bullies Manuel, the, the Spanish waiter, and uh, he's the one that's often laughed at, um, at the, by the end of the episode. Sybil, played by Prunella Scales, is uh, terrific as well. She's funny in her own right. Um, completely um, almost blocks out Basil's rudeness. Uh, but she does kind of... Uh, crack sometimes and uh, kind of starts whacking him etc you know she's fat she's a fantastic foil to basil faulty then we have polly who's the uh, the maid and she seems to be the the quickest witted of the characters in some respects and she tries to think of ways out of the the, situ the incredibly difficult circumstances they find themselves in um, and Manuel, of course, brings a lot of laughs. Um, this waiter from Barcelona, he speaks very broken English and seems to misunderstand most things. And he's a likeable character, but he's treated terribly by Basil. So they're the four characters, and it really is an ensemble piece. You know, they just bounce off each other and... Uh, the script so witty and clever and funny and um, you know it really is fantastic and then you get the other characters who come in the various episodes um, who are it, you, they're terrific as well so, it's so well cast Bernard Cribbins as the kind of very odd uh, guest who Basil mistakes for the hotel inspector um, You've got the lady who has, is very hard of hearing, who is just spectacularly rude, <laughs> you know, even ruder than Basil. Um, you've got uh, the drunken chef when they try to have a gourmet night who takes a shine to Manuel. All these wonderfully drawn and beautifully acted characters really help carry the show as well. And then, of course, there's the major, who's in every episode who just goes around in his own world, very much a relic of, of the past, but coming up with so many hilarious lines and so many, uh, just being absolute comedy gold uh, in many of the episodes. And there's only 12 episodes, two series, I believe that they didn't want it to, the, the standards to decline. And, you know, in hindsight, I guess that's a really good thing. You know, it's a shame other shows don't, follow a similar principle and um, but each episode is of such high quality standouts include of course uh, the last episode of series one and um, the germans when 
uh, Basil Fawlty is concussed when a, a moose falls on his head, a moose's head falls on his head and uh, some German guests arrive and all hell breaks loose. Uh, top quality comedy. And then um, other funny ones include an American tourist arrives uh, who asks for a Waldorf salad and they don't really know what one of those is but there's this guy, this American guy kind of stands up to Basil Fawlty and calls out his incompetence and uh, with hilarious effect. The last episode with the rats, Basil the rat, that's hilarious too when they're trying to have a health and safety inspection but there's this rat on the loose. And then there's the episode where a guest dies um, you know, and the comedy just thrives. It's the, I suppose it's what nowadays we'd call cringe comedy, a lot of it. You know, some of it's so unbearably kind of embarrassing. You, you kind of almost don't want to watch it, but you can't help but watch these characters make complete idiots of themselves. Um, um, a lot of the comedy results from misunderstanding. And from a sense of snobbery as well, you know, the first episode in particular, Basil, is completely taken in by this con man who uh, pretends to be a lord. And uh, so the, by the end of it, Basil's whole world is kind of uh, punctured. And of course, at the heart of it is just the character Basil Fawlty himself. He's just so hilarious, so funny in his kind of manic, stressed out... Uh, moods, his um, continual bickering with his wife, his the words under his breath and the um, his rudeness to the guests as well. Um, yeah, he really carries it through. It really is a showcase for John Cleese. So yeah, Forty Towers. Uh, if you haven't watched it, watch it. It's absolutely amazing. And I'll, I'll just stick in a, a quick slideshow of uh, what kind of the gist of each episode is, as well as some of the themes that crop up. Thanks for watching. Bye.